everyone and welcome back to another video. I am really excited to be filming today's video because I'm going to be sharing with you my current skincare routine and these are products that I use on a regular basis. They really work for me and my skin. Before I get into this video, I just want to say that I am not a dermatologist. I'm not an esthetician. I'm not a professional in any way, shape or form. These products and this routine is just what works for me and my skin. And I know everyone always says that they get a lot of questions about their skin, but I actually have been getting a lot of questions about my skin what I've been using, my little monthly facial that I do at home. I've always been conscious about my skin, but I'd say as I'm getting older, I'm gonna be 24 in August, I've really developed the mindset that prevention is key. And I know sometimes people will say, oh my God, you use so many skincare products, or not just to me, but to like other YouTubers or people as well, or oh my God, you have so much makeup, or you have so much of that. You know, all I can say is, yeah, I know I have a lot of products. I know that I could probably feed a small army with the amount that this cost. In my opinion, taking care of your skin and your body is a form of self-care. And as someone who's been through depression, you know, fighting depression on the daily, I feel like even little acts like washing your face or taking a shower or washing your hair or blow drying your hair, whatever it may be, if you're in a slump, just that little extra something can really make you feel better. And I think that's why I love skincare because it really is purely for me. When I take care of my skin, I'm not thinking about anyone else. I just really like having a um, fresh, even palette to work with. I will say that my skin is not, it's very cooperative, knock on wood. I don't have too many issues with breakouts. There are certain lines of products that break me out and I try to avoid them. In general, I feel like my skin can take a lot and I don't know if it's like that tough Greek skin or what, but it can take a lot. Like, I don't have sensitive skin now, but that's not to say that I haven't gone through periods where my skin was just, you know, something that I was really self-conscious of when I was younger and maybe a little bit more hormonal or when I was on birth control. I think maybe that sent my body out of whack and I would always have like a breakout on my chin. You feel self-conscious and I know everyone has a pimple and like if I have one pimple, I'm not gonna complain about it, but when you have multiple, it really does impact your self-esteem and so skin is really important to me. I know you guys want a body care video from me and I am planning on filming that very soon, but I think taking care of our skin is really important because it's the only skin we have. I think prevention is key. So yeah, I might go to bed all lotioned up, but I have really soft skin and my skin is cooperative and you you know, I'm very happy with this routine. It's a mix of high end, a mix of low end. I don't discriminate. If something works, I like it, whether it's from the dollar store or from Holt Renfrew, it really doesn't bother me. My skin, I would say, is combination. I would almost say combination dry. Oh, I also wanna say, in terms of what I get professionally done, I don't do any fillers or anything in my face. I'm honestly a little bit scared of fillers. I feel like if you just add more, like, I don't understand. Like, I don't want my face to, like, not have like dents in it. The only thing that I get done and I'm actually do probably for a touch up is Botox in my forehead. It's really the only cosmetic procedure that I see myself keeping up in the future. I don't, I just like my face the way it was. I don't know. And that's the fun thing about injections is that they do dissolve and I don't feel like my lips were negatively impact, but for the time being, I'm just doing like contouring and lip liner and gloss. Botox in my forehead is something that is I love. The idea of preventative Botox, it's not just a scheme to get people to do b Botox or whatever. When you're using a muscle a lot, like you can see in my forehead now, I don't have any skin smoothing or anything on this camera set, but you can see I have these lines here. Um, and I will talk about a product that I feel is like Botox in a bottle. For me, I'm very expressive when I talk and I would notice that I would make these lines in my forehead and they would stay there. And I just thought that it made my skin look dry. So I do love a little, little tiny smidge of Botox in my forehead, but that's it. I don't do any facials. I don't do any like skin treatments. I just do everything at home, everything myself. And that's what's working for me right now. That's not to say things can't change, but these are just my current favorites when it comes to skincare. To give you an idea of what I use on my skin on a daily basis, I'm gonna take you through from a.m. until p.m. In the mornings, I will typically wake up and I don't wash my face right away. Whenever I shower for the day, that's when I'll go in and cleanse my face. So this is a cleanser that I really like to use in the morning. This is a deluxe sample, I think, but I'm definitely interested in purchasing it full size. This was actually a pretty generous sample. It probably cost me like $500. This is the regenerating cleanser. They also have a few different cleansers. It has beta hydroxy acids in it, so it really helps plump and firm up the skin. I really like this because of the texture. So it has almost a 
grainy like texture this is really like a mini daily facial and i really like it for that reason because like i said i feel like it gives a really good base for my makeup and it gets off all the like gunk and skin cells that are resting on top of my skin your skin will feel so soft so refreshed so just like tight but not dry it's a really great cleanser it's definitely a little bit pricey for daytime i tend to keep it really simple so the only serum i'll ever really use is a vitamin c serum vitamin c is an antioxidant that helps fight the damage of free radicals and UV rays. From what I gathered, and I'm no Dr. Dre or dermatologist or anything, but free radicals can actually like slow down the body's process of regenerating and collagen production. At least that's what I understood. And so vitamin C is a really great serum to apply because it helps boost collagen production in the skin, which helps brighten up your skin. If you have acne scars or dark spots, vitamin C is a really great option for that. Whenever I put it on, I just feel like my skin just looks so glowy. I would say this is a good first serum to start with if you're just looking to add something new to your routine but you don't want to like go full on like full throttle vitamin c is also not stable so you might notice it change color ever so often but if you're using it you should be able to get through a product before it starts to turn but with that said that's why when you're purchasing a vitamin c serum you should always make sure it's in an opaque bottle so that way sun can get through it or whether it's like a Myron glass, something like this. And another thing about vitamin C is there's a bunch of different kinds. I'm not gonna get too technical because again, I'm no professional, but if you find that your skin is irritated by one vitamin C, you can find other options so you can reap the benefits of vitamin C as well. The more affordable one that I have been loving recently is by Mad Hippie. What I really like about the Mad Hippie is number one, it is way more affordable than the ones that you can buy at Sephora, but it also has hyaluronic acid, so it's really moisturizing. This product is like an OG to me. I've been using it since I really started getting into my skincare. What's nice about the Drunk Elephant Vitamin C Serum is that it's packed with antioxidants, fruit enzymes to gently exfoliate, and something that's interesting about this serum is that it has what's called a reservoir effect, and allegedly your skin can still reap the benefits of the Vitamin C Serum for up to 72 hours, even if you wash or like rub it off. So I don't know how that works, but that's definitely something that's interesting. Overall, Vitamin C is definitely something that I recommend everyone add to their skincare regime and and even though it has a lot of anti-aging benefits, number one, I don't think that you can start prevention too early. I don't think it should become an obsession where you're like, I can't have any movement in my face. I think natural lines and everything are beautiful and I think that aging, you know, I don't wanna be 50 looking like I'm 20. That's not what I wanna look like. I just wanna look good for my age. Like, you know when you see um, older women like in their 60s, 70s and they just look so youthful and healthy. A lot of the times if you ask them like what their secret is, it's moisturizing and taking care of your skin. And taking care of your skin doesn't need to be expensive. You can go get affordable skincare. It's just about finding things that work for you and give you the results you want. I just don't think that caring for your skin is wrong. Like One quick thing I wanna say is SPF is obviously very important. I really love the Drunk Elephant SPFs. This is the Umbra Sheer Physical Daily Defense and then this is the Umbra Tint Physical daily defense this has a really nice tint it's not overbearing it's not like huda nymph where you you will see like shine it's very natural and just adds a, like almost like a veil or like a filter over your face it's a really great product and then this is just the pure white one this has no silicones i believe and it's great to wear under makeup and just you know for the day when it comes to moisturizers i really am not afraid of oils i'm not afraid of looking greasy i think a lot of people could benefit from using oils what the heck did... For the longest time, I was using the Secret de Myco Cream. It was a blend of shea butter, rosehip seed oil, vitamins E, like I'm sure a few other oils, and I absolutely loved it. It's a little bit hard to get here in Canada. So next time I go visit Sierra, I'm definitely gonna be stocking up, but I really do love that cream, and if you did not have good experiences with the next cream I'm gonna mention, I think you will really enjoy that. Egyptian Magic has been in my life for years now. It's an amazing product. I love the sort of like, not mystique, is that even a word? I love like almost like the urban legend of the whole brand. One thing I quickly wanna say is that I know that a lot of people will order off of sites like Amazon. If you do, make sure you're getting it from like a licensed seller on Amazon if possible or a licensed retailer. I know in the US you can get it at Whole Foods, uh, some Walmart, so you are able to get it in stores and make sure that it's like the proper ingredients. I'm sure a lot of you have tried it already. It is a almost like a salve. I'm like running so low. I have a few jars lingering, but this one's almost done. The way it sinks into your skin, like Vaseline will sort of like just stay on top, 
but these just melt into your skin and you wake up or you like go on your day and your skin just looks beautiful and hydrated and glowy and not greasy. At nighttime when I use this, I'll slather it on way thicker. It's made with 100% natural ingredients and it is, you know, an all around great cream for your face, for burns, for blisters, for anything, I would recommend this. If I was on a desert island and I could only bring one product, I would bring Egyptian magic. It just has so many amazing healing benefits. I would use Egyptian magic as a primer, like a moisturizer, but I never felt like I got it to look exactly the way I wanted. I don't wanna give you the impression that it made my skin greasy, cause that's not what it was at all. I just wanted a way or a primer for my skin to feel a little bit more sticky, if that makes sense. I actually wanted something to make it feel a little bit more sticky, and I wanted to find a primer um, that would just like almost seal the Egyptian magic in, but keep my skin glowy, but still be a little bit sticky if I'm making sense. This primer by NYX, NYX, whatever you wanna call it, this is their new Bear With Me Hydrating Jelly Primer. Now this is a super interesting product. So as you can see, it looks like clear jello. If you stick your finger in it, it will form back to like perfect. It's very satisfying to look at. But what I love about this is that it makes your skin look like glass. So if you want that glassy look, this is it. To me, it has almost a similar feeling to the Milk Makeup uh, like Kush Gripping Primer. It is not like super sticky where you feel like ugh, like scotch shape, but it does provide a little bit of grip and I feel like helps my makeup stick on better. It's lightweight, you don't feel it, and you still have that like glowy, glassy look from the Egyptian Magic, but a little bit more refined. So even if you don't wear a ton of makeup, I think you'll love this. So that's pretty much my AM routine when I get out of the shower or when I'm about to do my makeup. At nighttime, taking off my makeup is honestly Honestly, one of my favorite parts. I just love feeling like fresh face and seeing the makeup go down the drain. I just want to stress that for me, I actually really enjoy doing my makeup, especially now that I'm learning new techniques and really wanting to refine my skills a little bit. On days when I don't feel like doing makeup, I don't sit down and do my makeup. I don't feel like I have to wear makeup, but I do enjoy the process. And honestly, as someone who does struggle with depression and anxiety, I sometimes feel like getting into that makeup chair is half the battle. And once I'm done with my makeup, I feel so much better. All right, so nighttime comes around or whenever I get home and I want to remove my makeup, these are the products that I always go to. So first thing, these makeup wipes. Oh my gosh, this is kind of like Signe's Milky Way case. So these, um, I actually ordered on Amazon and they're basically a more affordable version of a makeup eraser. Now I do have authentic like original makeup erasers. These do the exact same thing. I'd like having about five to 10 of these at a time. That way I can bring some on vacation if I go away or to people's houses because I don't like dirtying their linens. I honestly don't know why people would still use makeup wipes. I feel like this gets off so much more. My favorite method of removing makeup is balm cleansers. The first one I'm gonna talk about is probably the more traditional of a cleansing balm. To me, the texture of a cleansing balm is really important. I don't want a cleansing balm that feels greasy or like there's a leftover residue on my face. Case in point, the Drunk Elephant Slay Makeup Melting Butter Cleanser. I was so excited because I love Drunk Elephant. I ordered it right away and, ooh, there's a hair. And I used it a few times. I don't like this at all. Drunk Elephant normally always nails it. And if you've used this, let me know what you think. Or if you have a better way to use this where you don't feel like there's a residue left on your face, let me know. Green Clean by Pharmacy does have the same sort of texture. It looks just like a, almost like a lip balm. I love the texture of this because once it goes between your fingers, it sort of melts into an oil. And then once you add milk into the, <laughs> milk. Once you add water into the equation, it turns into this like milky cleanser. And I feel like it does a really amazing job of getting your makeup off. It has sunflower and ginger root oils, which are really great for getting off even the most stubborn of makeup. And it also has turmeric and moringa extracts. So that's really great at getting off like all the chemical residue, not chemical, but like sunscreen residue. I haven't found a drugstore dupe for a makeup balm remover. So if you guys have any, maybe I'm missing out on, let me know. The next product I'm going to talk about is the Charlotte Tilbury Multi Miracle Glow Cleanser Mask and Balm for Baby Soft Skin. I've been using this since November. It's my second tub, so you actually do get a lot of product with it. You know, on one hand, I'm like, all these items, some of these items are so expensive. Are they doing anything? But then I think I am really happy with my skin, so they must be doing something. You can use this to remove your makeup. You can use this as a mask. You can use this as a balm. You can use this on your um, elbows, your knees, any dry areas. Overall, this does get my makeup off really easily, and I do feel confident. Like if I just, if I'm feeling lazy and I just want to use this on my face and go and not use like and not do a whole other cleanse 
and just get right into bed I feel like my skin is very clean after I use it at that point I'll typically get into the shower or if I'm not getting into the shower I'll go ahead and cleanse my face so my favorite cleanser that I'm using right now is by CeraVe now I'm not sure what the general consensus on CeraVe is but it does work for my skin so I'm gonna keep on using it this is the foaming facial cleanser and it's for normal to oily skin. They also have a hydrating cleanser that is for normal to dry skin. So I'm definitely interested in trying that. It is a very uh, gentle cleanser and I've realized that for me personally, I don't, especially because I am removing my makeup prior to cleansing my face, I don't want a super intense cleanser. I just want something that'll cleanse my face of any leftover makeup and give me a smooth surface to work with. Even though this is for normal to oily skin and I have combination skin, this doesn't dry my face out. I never feel like my skin is tight or lacking moisture when I get out. So I feel like that's a really positive because even though it's the foaming facial cleanser and not the hydrating version, it still doesn't dry my skin out and it's so affordable. It's simple, but it works. And sometimes I feel like it's the best just to get back to basics. On days where I wear a little bit more makeup than I normally do, I do like to go in with a toner of some sort and I really like these witch hazel pads. People are divided when it comes to witch hazel. Some people think it's great for your skin, some people think it's terrible for your skin. As someone who used to rub rubbing alcohol, like pure rubbing alcohol on their face, I'm not kidding. Um, I don't really have a leg to stand on when it comes to witch hazel and I did that because my Aunt Louise is in her 50s and she's been doing that since her teens and her skin is amazing but I figure witch hazel is a little bit more of a gentler version of that so I just have the original and I know that you can get it in liquid form but I just like that it's already soaked the pads are a little bit abrasive they have like a crisscross pattern on it and it does a good job if I have any leftover dirt on my face um, it does a good job of removing it it's also great to rub on mosquito bites or on sunburns. It's just more convenient and I don't have so many little cotton things lying around so I like this a lot more. At nighttime, I used to use a serum every single night. Now I kind of alternate one night on, one night off, whatever I feel like my skin kind of needs. I will say that consistency is really key when it comes to skincare. Um, with that said, a lot of my products have similar ingredients and kind of do the same thing and I know how my skin reacts to it. So sometimes I'll do like one night this, one night that, one night retinol, one night that and and so far I haven't had any issues with my skin. I have a few different serums that I like to use at night and a lot of them have AHAs and BHAs. Alpha hydroxy acids help exfoliate dead skin cells, promote cell renewal, treat hyperpigmentation, and reduce the appearance of fine line and wrinkles. And beta hydroxy acids help to reduce pore size and helps to make skin feel very supple and smooth. So I do like using a mix of AHAs and BHAs in my skincare. Probably my favorite serum for nighttime right now is the Pharmacy Honeymoon Glow. It helps to resurface, hydrate, and clarify the skin. It also has honey in the formula, so it does moisturize and honey is antibacterial, which is really nice as well. This is probably the one I use most often because I feel like it's just a good, like, you know, like it's just a good crew neck sweater. It's just something that I can use on my skin if it's, you know, having a moment or freaking out and I know it'll help calm my skin down. If my skin's in a good spot, it just helps like smooth and just tighten everything. It really is like a comfy crew neck of sweaters, this, uh, this, serum. I love it. The next one is the Drunk Elephant TLC Framboose Glycolic Night Serum and this is also an AHA and BHA blend. It's very lightweight and it's said that this product actually helps enhance the other features of your skincare ingredients and helps it absorb better into the skin. This product refines and resurfaces your skin cells to help reveal brighter, smoother, more flawless looking skin. This is a really powerful serum and I do really recommend it but I just have a very special place in my heart for the Pharmacy Honeymoon Glow Serum right now. Another skincare ingredient that I just want to touch on quickly is retinol. I'm sort of new to retinol. I have used the ordinary ones in the past. As I'm getting older, I feel like I'm able to really see the effects on my skin a little bit clearer. Drunk Elephant released their version of retinol, and I have to say that is probably one of my standout products from Drunk Elephant. So when I said that some nights I will use retinol, some nights I'll use other ones, some nights I'll just focus retinol on my forehead and then just like do something else other places. The Drunk Elephant retinol is literally Botox in a little tube, but I really feel like the retinol is helping me prolong my visits to the doctor. Retinol is supposed to help like regenerate skin cells and it 
helps to reduce the appearance of fine lines, wrinkles, sun damage. It's just basically like almost like a little bit of a restart button for your skin. I've heard so many people talk about retinol over the years, but I never really gave it a fair shot and understood what it was supposed to do. And I also probably have a little bit more lines than I did like a few years ago. This, I swear, I'll put it on my forehead at night and give it a good coating and I will wake up in the morning and I will have way less lines in my forehead. Thinking of starting to use it every single night, but since we are getting into the summer months and we're planning on going up north a lot and going on vacation, I'm not sure if I want to like full-fledged go for retinol. Although I did read some studies where people will say, yes, it does accelerate the sun's like damage on skin, but a lot of studies say that it doesn't. But as always, I would recommend practicing safe sun and do what's best for you and your skin. What I really like about Drunk Elephant's retinol is that they actually recommend that you mix it with an oil because retinols can be really drying. It helps to make sure your skin is very, very moisturized. I feel like because I'm so heavy on the oil that I actually haven't experienced any peeling, itchiness, flakiness at all with retinol. I think like with retinol, the key is to really, really moisturize. So now I'm gonna talk quickly about my nighttime moisturizers. So at night, I will often use my Egyptian Magic, of course, but as some of you may know, I am also really, really into natural oils. I have a few that I really like on my face. I have so many oils and I will be doing an oil body care video soon for you guys. I looked up a lot of like ancient Greek beauty secrets and everyone said like oil 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 honey 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 so I feel like natural is sometimes best and my skin just really reacts well to these oils I know a lot of people are scared of oils and all oils have different non comedogenic ratings but these are not pore clogging and I haven't experienced any issues with pore clogging I recommend oils to everyone I use oils every single day I think more people need to be more hydrated I love rosehip seed oil I've been using it for a few years now on my skin rosehip seed oil is amazing for acne scars, stretch marks, basically anything that you want to fade. And it's also rich in antioxidants. I think my all-star oil that I would recommend to you guys is the carrot seed oil. I've been mentioning this a lot on my channel recently, but it's because I really believe in it and it's so affordable. Carrot seed oil is very rich in antioxidants. It's very rich in vitamins A and uh, E, I believe, vitamin C, has carotene. It is a powerhouse of an oil. I mean, okay, I'm not a professional, so don't take my word for it, but I love it. My best friend Sierra loves it. Mike loves it. Tony loves it. I love it. We all have different skin. We all have different skin issues. It's just a great, great oil. Sometimes I'll apply this straight to my skin. Sometimes I'll mix it into Egyptian magic. Sometimes I'll mix it into rosehip seed oil, or sometimes I'll mix it into marula oil. Marula oil is actually um, referred to as like the luxury oil. This one is by Drunk Elephant. However, you can find more affordable options online. I'll link a few down below that I personally would purchase, um, but I'm trying to be good and use things up before I buy more. So. All right, so now I'm going to talk about, I feel like I've been talking forever. As we all know, there are a million different face masks on the market so I just wanted to take a moment to highlight the all stars in my opinion my standout favorites that I will continue to repurchase and I feel really make a difference in my skin so the first one I'm going to talk about is probably not going to be a surprise for most of you it's a cult favorite a cult classic it's the TLC Sukari baby facial by drunk elephant now this is not available in Canada if you can get your hands on this I definitely suggest it it pairs beautifully with other AHA BHA products like the TLC this is basically a facial in a bottle it is pricey I use it probably once every like week and a half whenever my skin just feels a little bit dull or I feel like I just need a little bit of an oomph in my skin this mask is incredible it's a pro quality AHA BHA blend it resurfaces your skin by gently exfoliating and it helps to smooth out texture and tighten pores this is a product I'm telling you like if you are just like oh my makeup is not looking right it's no matter what I do my skin just isn't looking how I wanted it you need to try this or a similar product. The Peter Thomas Roth Pumpkin Enzyme Mask is great, but this is just the creme de la creme. I know The Ordinary has their dupe version. I hated it. It really, really burnt my skin. This one is a little bit more gentle. It has chickpea flour, I believe, so it's not as intense. There is a little bit of tingling, but it really doesn't hurt. It's definitely an investment, but as someone who does everything myself at home, this is a product that I am always gonna have in my beauty arsenal. The next two are by the same brand, and the brand is Summer Fridays. I love the packaging, but with that said, these products are well worth the money too. So the first one one that was launched is their jet leg mask and this is a nice hydrating mask this is a mask that's amazing for this time of year if you're outside more in the sun more and you really just need like a tall drink of water for your face this is where it's at it's an amazing moisturizing mask 
I'll often go to sleep with this on and leave it on overnight. Their second launch was the Overtime Mask, and this is also an exfoliation, like enzyme-y sort of mask. And I love these together. So if you want to give yourself like an at-home facial, I would go overtime mask, then go in and moisturize. The overtime mask is amazing for dull skin. Similar to like if I feel like my skin is looking dull and I'll go for the baby facial, I'll kind of do those interchangeably. What I like about this one though is there is a little bit of a physical exfoliator element to it. So it does like if you have a spray tan on or self tanner or like a sunburn and you want to get off the dead skin, I do like having a little bit of that grit. I personally like I know everyone's so anti St. Ives and Kylie skin I don't mind a little bit of a physical exfoliation I think that they are very effective and do what they claim to do now I just want to quickly talk about another exfoliating product that I like to use about once a week or whenever I feel like my skin needs it I don't overdo the exfoliation I try and keep it pretty balanced but this is another exfoliating product that I love. It's a little bit more pricey. It's the Essence Noir Polish by Nanette de Gaspé. While I do really enjoy this product, it is around $90. And I don't know if the benefits that are claimed to be in it like actually make a difference for my skin. However, what I do love about this is how finely milled it is. It almost feels like the finest, finest, finest sand. And I mean that in the best way possible. It really is great. And if you just have like built up makeup, that if you feel like your skin is just like crusty and you need like an update and you just wanted like a fresh start on your face, this will really do it. And I also like it because it's thermal. So it feels a little bit warm when you put it on, like massage it into your face. And sometimes what I'll do is like if I'm going to be shaving my legs, I'll put this on, rub it in and leave it on while I like shave and do everything. And they recommend that and I haven't had any issues. Will I repurchase it? Like if when I run out, I've noticed that my skin is just like gone haywire and this is the only thing that's changed. Yeah. Just to be like transparent, I do use this really regularly and I am a fan of this product in general. And I love their cleanser too. It's pricey, but... I did love their cleanser. All right, the last thing that I'm gonna get into, I was actually a little bit nervous to film because I, like I said, I'm not a professional, I'm not an esthetician. I'm gonna quickly go through my little skin treatment that I do pretty much every two weeks, um, between every week and a half, two weeks. And I call it like my facial at home and it's something that I think a lot of people would benefit from. This is another tool that I love. It's the Nurse Jamie Roller. It's pretty pricey. You can actually get a similar one on Amazon. One of my uh, good YouTube friends, Vanessa, actually sent me one last year. I have them all over. It just feels so good and cooling. With that said, I have been rambling forever. This video is probably gonna be half an hour long. I hope that you guys enjoyed. I tried to give you a little bit more information about what the products actually do for the skin versus just like, oh, this is what I use. Let me know what your favorite skincare products are. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. As always, links to everything I talked about will be listed in the damn bar down below. I hope you have a great day or night depending on when you watch this, and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.